All right, the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs some 66 million years ago made the Earth's surface essentially turn to liquid. Scientists say the impact made the planet's surface, surface, excuse me, slosh back and forth. So to learn more about this, we're being joined now by the lead scientist of the study, Mr. Sean Gullick, a geophysicist at the University of Texas, Austin. Sean, thanks for being with us today. Um, what, what happened with the Earth's surface, with, with the, the, the asteroid, after it smashed into us? Yeah, to be more specific, it's actually the Earth's surface right at the site was vaporized. Uh, and then a bit below that was ejected. But the material below that then started behaving, we think, much like a slow-moving fluid, um, where it was first pushed downwards to create a, a, a crater, basically, a transient crater that would have been about a, 100 kilometers across, so say 60 miles across, and about 30 kilometers deep, so about 20 miles deep. Um, but that wouldn't have lasted very long. That would have actually started collapsing almost immediately. The sides would have collapsed in, and the center would have rebounded up. Again, everything moving like a slow-moving fluid, um, which then would have collapsed back outwards. This sort of rebounding center would become unstable after it reached 10 or 15 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, collapsed outwards, and made an actual ring of mountains around the center of the impact, what's something we call a peak ring. Now, now, it looks like you conducted your research in this Mexican town called, let's, let's see if I can get this name right, of uh, Chicxulub. Is that right? Well, Chicxulub is actually near the center of the Chicxulub impact crater. It's, it's where it got its name from. Um, the capital of the Yucatan is actually also within the crater, Merida, and the port city of Progreso. We actually conducted our research on, a, um, on what's called a lift boat. It's a drilling platform that lifts itself above the the sea surface, about 25 kilometers offshore uh, from Progresso, um, and used a mining rig to drill in uh, to the modern seafloor and down uh, hundreds of meters to reach the buried peak ring, and then actually collect rocks from the peak ring for the first time. Okay, I'm glad you mentioned peak ring, because first of all, can you tell us what a peak ring is, and, and tell us, uh, after you examined these peak ring samples, what, what does that mean for us and what we know about uh, the history of, of the dinosaurs so far? Sure. So the main reason that we were studying uh, of all parts of the crater we could have drilled uh, into, um, the main reason we were studying this peak ring, is that they are uh, basically formed in all large impacts. Um, yet we didn't have any idea exactly how they're formed. There were competing models of the way they were created. So by drilling into one, my, my co-chief Joanna Morgan and I um, pushed that we could learn something fundamental about how impact craters work as a process and thus calibrate the amount of energy released and the amount of material kicked up into the atmosphere um, by this impact, um, which ultimately led to 75% of uh, life on Earth going extinct. Wow. Now, well, what are what are some of the, the the key drivers of these surface changes? As you just said, killed roughly seventy five percent of what was on Earth back then. Well, there's a number of what we call potential kill mechanisms. Um, probably the most important, though, are the are the mechanisms that come from things being kicked out of the crater, so ejected or the vapor plume that then spreads around the Earth um, following the impact. Um, creating a, a layer of material at, say, the upper end of the stratosphere, um, and both having material rain out through the atmosphere, creating a major frictional event, a major heat wave, worldwide wildfires and things like that, um, followed by the, the finer material that kind of hung out in the upper atmosphere and the stratosphere um, for at least months and potentially years, basically impeding sunlight and, and we think, crashing the, the, the global food web. Now, what do your findings mean, then, for, for the evolution of life here on Earth? Does it tell us anything more? Well, I think it tells us something pretty fundamental. This is probably the most important uh, geologic event in the last 100 million years. It really reset the clock on an enormous amount of evolutionary uh, trends that were happening in terms of life. Um, and that obviously included the uh, end of the era of the dinosaurs and the rise of mammals slowly over the next uh, 60, you know, 6 million years leading to ourselves, which we should be happy about. <laughs> so, um, and then in addition, it, it we're learning something fundamental <clears throat> about the relationship between impacts and subsurface life. 
So we already know that there's more biomass on Earth today in the crust than there is on the surface. Um, and so we're very interested to know whether in impacts we create actually a habitat for maybe extreme uh, forms, extremophiles of, of subsurface life to, to kind of take a foothold. Because that might give us a clue about the origin of life on Earth, that maybe they, they started off in impacts, um, uh, unlike uh, the, the current theory, which is that they started off at mid-ocean ridges. Wow, certainly fascinating stuff and certainly stuff way above my pay grade. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Sean Golick, geophysicist at the University of Texas. Thank you.